All right, so the last uh, demonstration was kind of a disaster, so I didn't want to leave that um, where it was, but to give you guys some more direction for over this long weekend, uh, since we're not meeting Friday, it's Nevada Day. Um, so uh, this is basically a portion of the Klein bottle figure eight that I sampled. So I basically just uh, lopped off two sides and took a slice um, down the center. And so you can see what I get here. Um, in this case, it's, it wasn't too hard for me to sort of figure out a strategy here, right? So if you think about this for just a moment, right? let's blow this up. Over here, we have a sort of a wing of a building. And over here, we have a wing of a building on top of another piece of a building. Um, and you can see that this sort of wraps around and then we have something in the middle. And then down here, right, uh, is this sort of central space that sort of twists and vortexes, vortexes its, its way up. Um, and so I was thinking, you know, um, we could start to populate this with floor plates, populate this with floor plates, um, perhaps reaching around and populating part of this with floor plates. And then think about this as an atrium uh, that uh, um, sort of serves as both um, some park and, and some circulation to sort of work your way up and then in um, and sort of twist around. So, you know, thinking about that again, I don't have any annotating tools here, darn. Um, but thinking about this as a, as a sort of, maybe, maybe this will draw. Come on now. Really, will it ever draw? No, it won't. All right, well, anyway, think about the central space and then having some trays overlooking it, or trays over here overlooking it, right? Um, and so, uh, and then maybe the ground down below, maybe lift this up off the ground. It might be kind of awkward if I try to just sort of throw it into the ground and, and lop off the bottom. Maybe this bottom is something that can be experienced. I walk underneath the building and then, and then maybe the experience is, is sort of in the center, right? Um, as I start to encounter something heavy above me and then, and then this open space that sort of twists up and then into the building. Um, in the meantime, um, different pieces of program could be sort of, sort of perched on either side, sort of looking, looking around it, looking down into it. Um, this is basically a donut. You can see that there's a figure eight here and there's a figure eight here. I don't know if you can see my cursor. Figure eight over here, figure eight over here. So as the figure eight sort of wraps around in a donut or a torus, um, uh, it sort of twists, right? And so you can see the figure eight sort of rotated sideways here and it's more vertical over on the left-hand side here. All right, so first things first, you know, putting in the strategy, right? Here's the idea and here's what I did. I started to cut, put some floor plates in different places here, basically cut some planes through, um, intersect those planes with, uh, with this surface in order to get some shapes um, that I could start to fill in with with floor plates and then, and then offset um, downwards or extrude downwards, let's say 18 to 24 inches. Um, didn't know really guard right now um, for all of the envelope when I first started this. Um, you know, eventually I, I pulled it back and started to offset some, some places so that the slab would, wouldn't actually come up to the glass um, so that you would actually see some daylight there, see some daylight there, almost a little bit of a small small sort of push away at it. And I'll, I'll need to eventually put a guardrail there, right? Did it here as well, just to give it a little bit of a multi-story volume. Did it over here big time, pulled this back, right? I'm thinking maybe this is a uh, park down here with uh, some other pieces of program overlooking it. Um, you know, and sort of, sort of thinking about an indoor park that's, you know, more vertical than anything else. Um, pulling back those trays of the, the, the program above can sort of overlook it and, and get this sort of nice, nice scenic view. You can imagine joggers and trees and um, people walking dogs and things like that in here. Um, underneath, pulling this up, modeling a ground plane, which is basically just a, a drawing, giving that curb cut and uh, pushing downwards for the, the, the uh, street, right? Um, and then extruding that down so I have some, some mass right, for some ground. You also see I, I put in some of these stubby legs, you know. Um, at this point in time, I was just thinking of um, 
you know, some columns that, that might actually look sort of interesting from the outside. Maybe they're these cast concrete dudes or maybe they're, they're steel or concrete on the inside. Um, on the outside, they're wrapped with something to give it this shape. Um, but you can see now that, you know, I could sort of push through here on the approach, sort of move my way from the street and the sidewalk down underneath this thing. And uh, then find myself in a completely different atmosphere here in the center, right? It's kind of extraordinary. So the next steps, and I'm going to leave the floor plates on for a moment. Um, I'm going to turn off this default layer that gave me this shape, right? But I'm going to start talking about how I broke that default layer, that default sort of surface shell up into different pieces. In this case, I, I created several pieces and put them on a layer called opaque. And I also did, made some pieces and put them on a layer called transparent. In other words, thinking about where I'd have um, curtain wall, window wall, uh, you know, more opaque glazing, or sorry, more transparent and, and glazing rather uh, versus, you know, the places where I want it to be opaque and might think of it as a shell, right? Since this is so rounded, you know, I have to hold this thing up, but you can imagine structure in here, right? That uh, resembles more of a shell in certain places, right? So this isn't just a typical um, post and beam building um, by any means. Although I, I did set myself up for some sort of radial ring-like structure to sort of permeate through here that where the bays get larger and smaller depending on depending on what I do later. So if I need to put some columns in here, then I, I, I will. Um, I haven't gotten that far yet, right? But again, so just doing this, I'll just turn off the floor plates now that you sort of see in relationship where I, where I got these green and, and orange patches related to this gray, right? Um, and so in order to do that, turn on that gray, turn these off again. I'm going to use the extract iso parm, extract iso, iso curve. So extract iso curve, you can see it up here. As I start to type in extract, extract iso curve, I'll hit enter. And I can select this surface. And now it's going to let me place an iso parm here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to strategically place these around so I can use them to sort of split this larger surface into regions and patches that I can then assign, you know, or rebuild and then later, you know, assign um, curtain wall or, um, or to offset to give some thickness there, etc. right? So I might switch the direction in this case, direction, switch it over to V. Now I can go in this direction. So, you know, I might, for instance, think about this as being opaque. Then as soon as I round this corner somewhere, just move this. You can see as I'm moving it over here, I'm also getting one over here. So it remembers the overall surface and how this isoparm would be continuous throughout it. Um, even as I just move it along a trim of that original surface, it remembers that original surface. So maybe place one there, maybe place one over here where it intersects. You can always turn on my object snaps and try to find that intersection precisely. see what I have here. So I have this curve. I, I put a curve over here as well. Let's try to extract one more. Maybe I didn't quite get that. Let me just... Sometimes it's a matter of figuring out. Where it places that. Um, likewise, I could do it down here. Maybe give this a little bit of an edge and then make it glass moving upwards. Very similar to some of the things that we were doing previously. Okay. Just try to move this so that hitting there. Right, and so, um, you know, basically, I'm gonna put these where I need them, at least as much as possible. Oh yeah, look at that. Maybe I'll move one down here, split that. But eventually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, take some of these, I'm just gonna start to break this up. So I'll take this curve, for instance, and this curve that I made, unselect this surface. Yeah, there we go. So maybe I start with those curves. All right, so um, I can start to split this thing up. I can say split, split the surface. What am I gonna to use to cut this curve? This curve, 
Wow, now I can, I have a region there. I could put that on, let's say, the transparent layer and, and uh, move on, right? Um, same thing here, I could use this to, I have this, let's split this up, split, split with this. Right now I have a region here that I can, you know, so I, I can start to break this up into opaque and transparent regions. Let's say this was more of opaque shell. This is more of a transparent um, sort of glass membrane with some mullions and, and eventually maybe even some space frame or some trusses to hold it um, in place as it spans both uh, vertically and laterally. It's a sort of a diagonal. Right, so that's how I, that's how I started to go move from, from this gray stuff to this green and orange stuff. Now that alone isn't enough for me to start to use some grasshopper tools here. Um, and so one of the things I also begin to do, right, is, let's just see here. I'll turn on this, right? So you can compare, let's say the opaque and the transparent. Turn that on and off here. All right, so what I can do is I can take this stuff I can extract its edges and its and its uh, some of its isoparms in this direction or its wireframe, and I can loft or sweep these into um, new new surfaces that are rebuilt and slightly cleaner. Right? Okay. So you can see I have one there. I have one here. Ooh, that's interesting. I have one here and there that I need to clean up. Right? I have one here and here. Right? So um, again, sort of getting all of these curves in order and, and cleaning them up becomes um, critical. So what ends up happening is like in my case, I ended up sweeping and lofting these things. So I got one there, I have one here that does all the twisting. I have one here that, that goes down towards the, uh, the, the plaza in the center. I have one here that comes out to the street. You know, I have one here that sort of splits upwards, right? So um, again, just sort of breaking these off. Let me just show you what that looks like when I, when I do this. So for instance, with this one, right, you can see that I don't have continuous set of isoparms, right? I want a clean sort of checkerboard, so to say. And so one of the things I'm gonna do is maybe duplicate the border. Dupe, try to type in the right letter, dupe border. And just get that border in there. Yeah, that looks good. Um, I might delete this away then, All right? So now I have this border. I can go ahead and explode that. What I want are these two sides and then these two the top and the bottom edges. And so now what I'm gonna do, several different ways you can do this, right? In this case, I, what I might do is sweep with two rails, right? So I might use that as a rail, use this as a rail, and then say, this is a cross section and this is a cross section, and then make a new one. And then I could always say rebuild, right? Let's see if, yeah, and get something nice and clean there. It okay, All right? And some of these, you know, I can take the isoparms in a particular direction and loft them together if I wanted to. Um, some of these I, you know, I, I sort of combined. You know, for instance, this one and this one are two surfaces, you can see. Um, what I did is I got the edges and the dupe borders and some of these isoparms along the way, um, and then I just joined them together uh, before sweeping and lofting them um, in order to create, you know, a singular sort of, uh, a singular surface here. So there's one surface, there's another surface, right? Um, what that allows me to do is to apply curtain wall and, and some other things across these um, in, a, in a way where I can get all the mullions to line up. Now, what's interesting is that, you know, you lose some of the double curvature here between, let's say, here and here. You start to see some seams that you see it right here. And then this twisty one is also kind of a funky one. It, you lose that the, the curvature um, tangency here, you start to see a seam or, or a, a, um, a sort of fold, right? Um, and I was willing to to do that in order to sort of make everything else sort of line up and make everything else sort of congruent, right? Um, so I'm just using that curtain wall script, applying it to each of these surfaces, double checking the the uh, number of divisions in the U and the V, making sure that they line up from one one surface to the next, whether we have adjacencies. Um, all right. Simultaneously, I'm going back to these opaque por portions here, right, the green. Um, what I can do is I can offset those as solids to both sides or to one side versus the other and create a set of shells. 
right? So now I have these sort of thickened um, walls and, and surfaces and what I, what, I, what I would honestly call a shell, right? So I start to put this together and you can start to see this starting, you know, taking shape. It's sitting on a site, there's a ground plane. I start to understand how it's, it's not just hovering over the ground, but, but there's supports, right? I can start to see how this thing could start to work spatially, right? Um, for both volume, multi-story volumes, some trays of, of program, right? Some of these things start to continue onwards and connect up further where we, uh, beyond where we cut our section where I've taken a slice. Okay. Um, you start to see some nice, nice things here, right? Like an atrium space with a mezzanine overlooking it, right? Again, I can think of this as a sort of a park that sort of wraps through, right? Um, you can't really see it wrapping through in the rest of the section, but you know, perhaps it could actually meet up here and start to do things. You know, these are separate, separate places. So, you know, the floor heights don't necessarily match up here, right? So, you know, trying to fit, fit some floor plates in here comfortably, you know, at a certain point, there's a diminishing return here. I don't, I'm not even gonna put something up there. I just have a tall space with some glass moving over and some nice soar, soaring, vaulting, doubly curved stuff, goodness over here, right? Same thing up here, right? But i um, starting to think about this now in, in section, right? Um, all right, this ground plane is super barren, right? I mean, that's a real problem. I mean, you can't just leave this as a windswept um, uh, plane of concrete. That would just be terrible. So um, at this point, what I did is I, I took, took the isoparms from my original shape and, and projected them downwards onto the ground plane to start to think about how the same organization that helped me organize all this stuff could help me organize the ground as well, making, making it look like the landscape, the site, the ground, and the building are sort of all working together here and formed by the same sort of stuff. At this point, what I did is I, I turned all this other stuff up. I looked at just these curves, used the curve billion tool, started to um, edit some of this stuff out and then push and pull a little bit here. So I went from this to some ground pattern curves, just cleaning them up, to then sort of extruding certain things up or down. You know, maybe these become seating and planters, barriers between pedestrians and cars and things like that. Um, just sort of, again, thinking out loud in places where I could plant trees, all sort of leading me to the center here, right? I mean, that's the, one of the key things is to, that this sort of directs me um, if I'm on, walking as a pedestrian on the ground plane um, to where I, where I want to go, right? So there's a focus down here, this sort of spiraling vortex that, that sort of twists up through. I still need to work that out and maybe think about how that circulation might work and where I start to put escalators or maybe start to punch some holes through. Right, maybe, maybe there's a similar strategy here for how I did these legs, but maybe thinking of a larger sort of glass one with, uh, with an escalator that punches through, right, as a sort of sculptorly sort of thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of glass here, and some of it is, is not only just vertical, but also uh, uh, sort of um, lateral. Um, and so, you know, thinking about how this might work, right, sort of spanning between here and here, it's kind of a long span, to be honest. Um, so if I need to, I can I could always use those same surfaces and apply uh, you know trusses or um, other sorts of structural supports just for the lateral bracing um, for this glass and these curtain walls. In this case, I picked a space frame and started to um, um, put it in various places throughout. Right, sometimes it's on the inside, sometimes it's on the outside. I'm trying to sort of both not clash with uh, existing floor plates that I have or existing skin and shell that I have, also trying to accentuate this sort of idea of flipping the inside the out um, in different places, so, um, and embracing that, right? So, you know, I, I really, this took me about an hour and a half, you know, um, so, you know, I don't think it'll take you that short of a time, but I did want, just sort of want to go through these, these sort of, these workflows, right? Um, last but not least, Let's see here. You know, I, I still, there's still some things to do, right? Like I need to put some, maybe some, some sort of uh, um, guarding rail, guard rail or turn the, the sort of these slabs upwards to, you know, around the edges to keep people from falling and walking right off and dying in my building. That would be a bad thing. Um, you know, I, I haven't really addressed uh, vertical circulation yet. Um, that's something I would do. Um, and... Uh, you know, but at, but at a certain point here, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm really close to just sort of bringing this into Photoshop and starting to do some, some basic sort of collaging with some vegetation trees, scale figures, start to understand what I have in here. Um, 
Yeah. So, um, you know, the other thing I haven't done is I haven't broken up the shell. You know, is this concrete? Is it paneling or something like that? Right. I could I could begin to take that sort of outer surface and begin to break it down into smaller shapes and, and to sort of put seams or um, or reveals and things like that into it. Right. Um, give it some more materiality and, and sort of make it more believable as a piece of architecture. You know, a set of materials that have been choreographed and, and placed together to create a sort of poetic whole. Um, last but not least, you know, you can see that there's some weird sort of tangency issues and um, around these edges. Um, but what I did last is I, I made some clipping planes. I'll just turn that layer on. Right? And then I'll select those two clipping planes and put them into effect here in the perspective. Just turn those off so we don't see them. Um, but now, you know, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm pretty close to, you know, being able to to uh, do a make 2D, uh, and it'll give me the clipping plane stuff, right? Um, let's see what it looks like rendered. You know, just a simple soft shade render, right? You can see, oh, it's getting there, right? Um, not done by any means, but at the same time, you know, it's a productive way for me to start to start with the big, big ideas, start to break this thing up, and then start to get inside and start to, uh, both the inside and the outside, start developing it, uh, making more decisions, right? Turn those off. Oop, nope. Keep the mullions on. Turn the, the actual surface off since the glass is opaque at this point, right? So you can start to zoom in and start to see this sort of really intricate, light, airy uh, structure of mullions and, and uh, space frame, um, sort of infilling some of these um, gaps in between this sort of much larger, heavier sort of shell. You know, this twisting, right? You know, in a way, yeah, it's kind of like science fiction, but it, I would say embrace it. This is this is very much of the spirit of, um, you know, this sort of twisting, self-intersecting sculptural part of the building, right? Is a place where you could think about it as this sort of uh, piece to move around uh, as you um, start to, to move up and into the building um, and, and then even moving laterally, right? So, um, you know, embrace it, embrace that stuff, right? In this case, it'd be like, what kind of material do I make that out of, right? Um, how do I begin to render it? How do I make it really special? Um, you know, do I pull all the floor plates away from it so I can admire it as a vertical thing, not something that looks like it crashes through the floor plates, but something that I can look down and up at and start to see its con continuity, you know, beyond just the snapshot that I get on, uh, let's say, this this tray of program or this tray down here of program. So, again, you can start to play those games, right? I, if I wanted to do that, I could go back to the floor plates, turn a lot of these other layers off, or if I need to see them, um, keep them on, but but lock them, um, and then offset that that initial outline for the floor plate, and then resurface it, and then re-extrude it, right? So um, as a solid or whatever. So you know, at this point, you know, there's a lot of things going on here already, both at the ground plane and then up and into the building, um, both inside in section, but also with the skin in the envelope. Um, you know, I, again, I. You know, I, I made a lot of glass here, but, you know, the rest of the building sort of overhangs it and shades it. I mean, look at that. That's beautiful, right? So now suddenly I have this, this glass front um, sort of overlooking the, the street and the city. Um, you, know, I, you know, so there's lots of opportunities here to start to, to think about this. And what I encourage you to do, I might just quickly turn off the structure. It looks like that really sort of makes things go a little laggy here. But, you know, you can always start to think in perspective and start to think about the experience underneath, right? Now imagine, you know, is that a cold exterior? Is that a warm sort of uh, material, right? You can almost think of it as laminated wood or at the same time you could think of it as concrete or aluminum or, you know, something like that. Or, um, you know, put yourself underneath here and start to think about, okay, how do I begin to define entrance, right? And, uh, and, you know, you could do that, right? You know, let's say I enter here. I've sort of made a, a, a sort of center point here that everything sort of points to, right? Maybe that takes me to some sort of uh, escalator or, or ramp that, that brings me into, into this area and back and forth. I enter in a park, right? I could take this into Photoshop and start to put trees and, and, uh, and silhouettes or humans and entourage and things like that in here. I could put office furniture in here, either uh, um, in the model itself um, if you have some of those uh, um, blocks and they're not bogging things down too much, or you could you could put them in in Photoshop or something if you have some some uh, time on your hands and some good uh, perspective matching skills, right? 
I have a few clashing issues here, right here. And I noticed that because um, this twists really suddenly, but the shell was offset into this. So, you know, I, I would maybe try to clean a few of these things up, right? Um, certainly make it look like that was an intentional sort of thing. Um, and that's really uh, part of this uh, exercise as well. Once I turn it to, let's say, uh, rendered mode, I can, I can start to look around it and look at it more carefully um, inside and outside and try to find either opportunities or other challenges that I need to, to sort of figure out and, and uh, look at. And ideally, turning challenges into opportunities. That's, that's part of what architecture is all about. You know, everything's a challenge. Um, but can you work with those? And, and uh, um, again, in the spirit of not getting stuck, can you turn those things into opportunities where you're making some really solid decisions up front that solve a number of problems or, you know, align themselves with what, what you have rather than working against what you have or creating more problems down the line, right? So that's always a key here. Let me go ahead and close this out. And I hope this helps. Um, and I hope this helps you over the weekend. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to sort of uh, continuing this discussion um, as we go, right? This is the exciting part. This is the fun part. Um, but there's a lot to do. And uh, sometimes it can be frustrating with the geometries and things like that. So good luck.